Hey guys, another video for our how to do stuff in Japan playlist. Although this is another one of those heads up videos. Um, not really a how to do stuff, but just uh, something to be aware of. By being aware of it, it might be helpful for some people. We're making this video specifically for a person who's on Patreon. One of our patrons who uh, sent an email. Pretty sad email. He's having a bit of a hard time. Pretty broken hearted. And sadly... We get messages like that from people all the time, telling us, look, we had this great relationship going with this person, it was all going well, now sometimes girls, sometimes guys send us these mails. Um, it was all going well, and then suddenly, you know, she says she doesn't want to see me anymore, or he said he doesn't want to see me anymore, or more often, um, they're not answering my emails anymore, that's really common, that's a Japanese way of dealing with these sort of things. Um, very common too. People say, I was in Japan for a year and I had this great relationship and I thought it was going to go somewhere and we were really close and she kept telling me she loved me and I thought it was really good and then I went back to my country and she stopped answering my emails. What do you think's happening? Right? And, you know, what, what do we think's happening? Well, again, there's always exceptions to this, but most, and, and obviously there's all sorts of different circumstances depending on the person and, and the people involved, but uh, usually what's happening is just confusion and misunderstanding of what was really happening in the first place. Because, you know, we've talked about this, we had a video, video on loneliness, and we've had lots and lots of videos on the cultural differences. And, and that's often the core uh, cause of the, of the confusion, is that what we think is happening and what the Japanese person thinks is happening are often really different. And, you know, she said she loved me. Well, yeah, um, Daisuke. We hear people say Daisuke here sometimes. And, you know, I've had I've had adult women say to me that they, you know, some guy, oh, don't cut, you know, cut it Daisuke. I, you know, like, I love him, Daisuke. And then a week later, you know, what happened to that guy? Oh, he's, you know, he, he spends too much time playing games and he's, you know, video games and he's not really... You know, he doesn't work very hard, so I've decided he's, he's you know, not a very good boyfriend. You know, a week ago, Daisuke, a week later, he's finished. And, you know, that's that's a big one. What what the concept of Daisuke is, you know. And, and you know, we've talked about this on, on a recent video about the people not being so close. I mean, you know, these people, not everybody, but these, these people that are getting their hearts broken is because, you know, they think it's them, but it's, it's not. If you look at... If you look at the families of the people here, they're not that close either usually, you know, and even their friends, and, and it gives the impression, this is the problem, is that it, you get the impression that people really care about each other and they're really close and, you know, and, and you can get that impression here sometimes, and then you'll see, you know, um, you know, the husband's there and he's got his wife and his two kids and he's really, oh, you know, they're really close family and it's all really good. And then he gets it offered a job in Singapore, or, you know, we've used that example a few times. And that particular guy, you know, two kids, wife and two kids, everything's good, gets offered a job in Singapore, and off he went. 51, 51 weeks of the year, off he went. We know another guy, who, you know, South Korea, same thing, had two kids, and wife and two kids, and it's all good, and gets offered a job in South Korea and took it, off he went. Off he went to South Korea, and we don't see him anymore. Um, you know, it's really, really common. I told you recently about the 18-year-old the who's just going off to a university in Sapporo and, you know, she's got no second thoughts about, you know, leaving all her friends and family behind. Off she goes to Sapporo and, you know, then in their, in their holiday times, they don't come back and visit their friends and family. They go and do something else. So just the relationships here are not as close as as they are in in some of the cultures that some of us come from you know and and that can be what bites people you think this person's really close to you but you know what their idea of the friendship is and what your idea of the friendship is are often really really different you know and their behavior the, the thing that complicates this is that the japanese people are so kind and and polite uh, that they will you know, often totally convince you that they just think you're great and, and you know, if it's a member of the opposite sex, they'll, f you know, they'll flirt and what, what appears to us to be flirting anyway, they'll be really, really super, super friendly and, you know, you get guys here, 
a lot of you guys would have seen this on the internet. Sometimes you'll see comments from guys saying, "I went to I went to Japan and all the girls loved me," right? And a lot of guys say that. And it's just the impression that you get when you come here at first, you haven't been here before, and you don't know much about the place, and you come here and all the girls will treat you like you're really something special. And it's just that's just the way they behave. They're being really friendly and really really smiley and happy and genki, you know, full of beans and and it gives it can give people the impression, can give dudes the impression in particular that she's really into me. You know, and then the next girl I meet, she's really into me. So what happens is when you get people behaving like that, and even if they're off you, and we've seen this before, we, you know, it's amazing when you know a, a girl pretty well, and you know that, that she doesn't like that guy, you know, she doesn't like that guy, and, and quite often it's just because of little subtle things you know, maybe a little comment that she makes, or expression on her face or something, and you know, you know, you mentioned the guy's name, he's coming, oh, is he really, <laughs> you know, oh, is he, ah, uh, you know, uh, and then the guy comes and then she treats him like he's really something special and it's just what they do it's just what they do and if you're not aware of this you know that guy if that guy's not aware of this he'll be thinking oh wow she's really into me and she's really not you know and this this can be shattering and it doesn't matter how long you live here this can continually happen to you because you know what the, the, the trap is the, the trap is even if you know all this stuff and, and I've had situations here where I've warned people and said to them, look, I don't think she's as into you as you think she is, you know. Oh, no, no, she's different. No, she's just Japanese. She's just being, being polite and kind. No, no, she's different. And that's a real trap. You get people here do that all the time and think, oh, no, no, this one's different. I, I understand pe Japanese people really well, but this girl's different or this guy's different. And, and start to get the impression, this one's different. And particularly if they speak English to a reasonable level, and or they've lived in another country. Oh, this, he speaks, she speaks English really well, and she lived in another country, and she loves Western culture. That's another trap, is that they talk to you about your culture and say, oh, I love Western people because they're so honest and open and, 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 and so relaxed and happy, and I love Western people, and I love foreigners, and I love, you know, I love everything about you, you know? You, and you get all that, oh, wow. She's different. No, and usually, most of the time, no, she isn't. And that's what really, that's how people get heartbroken. Because they think, oh, this one's different. She's, she's not your normal Japanese girl at all. She's, she's really genuine. This isn't fake. This isn't fake. This is real. She's really genuine. She's really great. She's special. She's different from everybody else. You know, all the Japanese people are like that, but not her. She's not like that. She's different, you know. And then, then suddenly the emails stop. Suddenly, and and because that's the other thing is that quite often in our cultures, when you you know, have a relationship that's starting to fall down, usually you know, you know, it's starting to fall down, and then suddenly, you know, and then and then you get a message, and or someone says to you, no, look, I think it's over. And quite often we're not really surprised because we've sort of known that it wasn't doing well. But the Japanese way is just to pretend everything's really good and everything's fine and she'll still be super genki and still saying all those things to you and telling you daisuke and all that stuff and then suddenly just say, you know, I don't I can't see you anymore or just stop answering your emails. That's the most common way. Japanese people don't like confrontation or any sort of drama. So their, their way of dealing with things like this is often just to stop answering your emails. Because that confuses the heck out of people because people think, what? Everything was fine and now she's telling me she doesn't want to see me anymore or she stopped answering my emails, told me not to email her anymore. Happens all, happens all the time. And not just with romance either, not just with romance, with, with friendships as well. You know, that, that happens with friendships as well where you, you have a, a, who you think is a friend here and they're behaving like a friend and, and you know, you think you're close to them and you think it's a friendship and then suddenly they're off you. And, and quite often, quite often it is the cultural stuff. It's the cultural stuff is that you've misunderstood exactly what they thought of you or how close you were to them or the, the, the idea of what a friendship is. You know, quite often in Japan, right, relationships are really skin deep. And it's not always the case, but it usually is. And, and not just romances or friendships, but family relationships and all sorts of relationships. 
are quite often just skin deep. And if you watch two people together, you'll think they're the best friends in the world. And then you'll hear what they actually really do. And then you'll know that they're not actually that close at all. But it's just their behavior. It's Japanese behavior is that super friendly, super genki, hiding any sort of negative emotion or any sort of, you know, anything that might make anybody feel bad. So Japanese people are usually much better at reading it. So they, they can deal with all this stuff. But people who aren't Japanese come along here and sort of, it's hard not to take things at face value. Even if you're being careful, and you go, oh, wait a minute, I've heard about this. You know, even if you're being careful quite often, you'll still think, no, this one's different. And that, that's a constant killer. That gets all of us. That gets all of us. You have someone that you think, no, hey, this guy's a little bit different. He's pretty good. You know, this guy's a bit different. Well, this girl's a bit different. And then they'll do something. You know, some of you might remember a story a while ago. There was a guy I knew that was sort of pretty friendly with and we used to do a lot of things together and he was a pretty good guy and um, we used to race cars together and all sorts of stuff he was a bit of a manly man but then after I got married he he, um, he was disappointed that I wasn't spending time with him playing boy games anymore so you know most of us in most of our cultures would just send a message and say hey how about a beer or let's catch up or let's go do something <coughs> wouldn't we you know, and if he had done, I would have said, yeah, okay, I would have found some time because he's a fairly entertaining guy. Um, but he didn't do that. What he did was he contacted another dude that I know. Um, and then in that dude, instead of contact, and he contacted this other dude that I know and said, oh, you know, he, we were really good. We were spending lots of time together. And then since he got married, he's not talking to me anymore. And I, I helped him get his apartment and I did all these things and now he's not... So it's a Japanese thing, it's giddy, right? So like obligation. So he saw it that we're sort of friends, but also I had this obligation to him because he helped me out with some things. And so I had an obligation to him. So I should be spending time with him, right? And again, if he sent an email and said, let's catch up, I would have said, yeah. But at the time, you know, getting married, making babies and stuff like that was a little bit busy. Um, but, you know, he contacted the other dude, and that dude talk, spoke to his wife, and that, that guy's wife spoke to my wife, and then it came back to me that this guy was not happy because, you know, I hadn't been drinking beers with him, hanging out with him, chasing girls with him and stuff. You know, and, and to see, stuff like that can shatter. For, for some of us that come from different cultures, you can imagine I didn't feel really friendly towards that guy anymore because it was like, what a pussy. What a pussy, if he wanted to drink beer with me, why didn't he send me a message? He made this huge drama by contacting this other dude who spoke to his wife and then spoke to my wife and came back to me. There's a mountain, snow on the mountains out in front of us there, guys. But instead of just being direct, and see, that's the thing of another difference that we have is what we expect from friendships in, in you know, in, in our different cultures. And this is what I exchanged a few messages with this guy on Patreon and, um, and I was saying to him, it's, it's quite often the expectations that we have. You know, in, in a lot of our cultures, we expect friends or relationships to be honest about it. Oh, just lost the front camera. You're still with me there. Uh, so we expect our relationships to be honest, don't we? And we expect, we expect people to tell us what they really think and really feel. And you know, that's from friendships and romances, isn't it? That's just what we expect a relationship to be based on is that trust and and honesty and all those things <clears throat> and in Japanese life it just isn't that being not as we've talked about a million times before not being honest with a person to protect their feelings to stop their feelings or to stop any sort of confrontation or drama is a, is a kind thing to do you know not telling a person that you're just not into them and not being honest with them like that is, is considered you know telling someone you're not into them would be considered to be a not kind thing to do so pretending that you still like them when you don't is a, is a kind thing to do. And a Japanese person say, oh, she's very kind. She didn't tell the American guy that she wasn't into him. She just keeps pretending that she likes him and, and you know, because she's so kind, right? And then the American guy's really confused, isn't he? Because he can't work out what's going on. So, you know, and it doesn't matter how much we warn people about this. We've been war sort of warning people about this for years. Um, you know, that it's that this person's different. That's the trap. That's the thinking that traps people is that, oh no, this person's different. 
this person's different, this person's not like that, you know. Um, and look, you know, we all get that, I still get that, I still get that, I still get people here that, <clears throat> that I spend a bit of time with <coughs> at work or, you know, in other places and, and start thinking, no, this, this guy's really, and because they'll, it, you know, they'll go on about Western culture, and I really like Western culture because it's so honest and it's so, you know, it's, it's so, you know, different, it's better, and, and they'll convince you that they're so totally into the, the, the non-Japanese way of thinking. And they'll convince you of that, and you, and you think, yeah, no, maybe this guy gets it, you know, and then you sort of speak to them about something, because the other thing is that Japanese people usually don't, in a lot of our cultures, we'll talk to, to friends about just about anything, you know, and we we'll, might complain about the boss, or we might talk to them about something that, you know, we don't like very much, or not happy with, and that's a real trap too, that happens all the time here, where, where foreigners get a little bit a bit frustrated with some aspect of Japanese culture. Um, a guy was telling me, another foreigner was telling me a while ago that they put new speakers in there, his house, for broadcast speakers, you know, we've showed you those before and they're really loud. And he was talking to someone and he thought that person was pretty cool and, you know, was sort of fairly open to talking about things. And he's, he was talking about the speakers and how loud they were and how annoying they were. And this person's got really pissed off with him and said, Shogunai! <laughs> Shogunai, yeah can't be helped and that happens that happens you can get bitten by that one too you think the person you're speaking to is cool and you can talk to them about anything and then you start to talk to them and then suddenly they go shogun oh yeah can't do anything about it sort of and what that means is why are you telling me why are you complaining to me about this annoying thing you know not, it can't be helped it's just the way it is so why are you why are you complaining to me about it that's what that means and see, that's what happens to foreigners when that happens to them. Non-Japanese people, when it happens to them, they think this person's their friend and suddenly they get a dose of that and they realise, oh no, this isn't the sort of friendship I thought it was. This isn't what I consider to be a friendship. This is just an acquaintanceship. This is just someone who talks to me sometimes. That's all it really is. And sadly, sadly, when, when people get their hearts broken here, they think they have a romance going on. Sadly, quite often they don't. And it happens all the time. Happens all the time. You know, I've been spending lots of time with this girl. And, you know, I get messages like this all the time. I've been spending lots of time with this girl. And she's a lovely girl. And we've been going places and doing things. And going out to dinner. And I bought her some presents. And I'd done this and I'd done that. And she'd, she'd been really kind. And it was really wonderful and wonderful romance. And then I went to kiss her. <laughs> I went to kiss her one night. And she got really angry. <laughs> and I haven't seen her since. And that's what it is. It's that misreading what was going on for all those reasons that we just talked about. Misunderstanding what was actually happening there and what he thought was happening wasn't really happening. You know, and we get this all the time. So, look, as far as how to deal with this, you know, you just got to be aware of it. And, and if you find yourself saying, oh, look, I know about all that stuff, but this one's different, you know, you might be lucky. One in a million probably is. And we do know some examples that are, that are a bit different. But usually it's not. Usually it, it comes down to how well the non-Japanese person adjusts to the Japanese way of thinking and behaving and doing things. You know, that's usually what it comes down to. That if, if you want a relationship with a Japanese person, you have to do it their way. You can't come home and complain about your job or complain about your boss or... Or, or talk about your frustrations with, with something that's happening in your life or talk about your frustrations with Japanese society or anything like that. You know, you just have to not do that and, and adjust to the Japanese way of doing it. Not holding hands with your girlfriend when you're out in public and, you know, listening to her, telling her friends um, how, how you're not cool. We've talked about that before. But that's pretty much the deal. Usually, if you want to have a relationship with a Japanese person, it'll come down to how well you can adjust to living like a Japanese person and having a relationship that's a Japanese-style relationship. And most of the time, the statistics are, most of the time, people can't do it. Most relationships, most relationships between Japanese and non-Japanese person, people fail. That's just a statistic. And we've seen that statistic lots and lots of times over the years. Different, different groups and organisations will do will do, um, what do you call them, surveys. And the results of those surveys are almost always the same, that you know most relationships between non-Japanese people and Japanese people fail. 
and you get those people that come to Japan and live here for a while and they think they've got it and they found this person who's different. She's different to all the other Japanese people. And they get married, they have a couple of kids and it fails and they're not going home. Or if they're lucky, before they get married, it fails and they go home. But sadly, quite often, it's not until after they're married and they've got a couple of kids that they realise, no, this wasn't what I thought it was. And again, that's the sort of the centre to this whole thing, is what you, what you think's happening and what you think that person is about is usually not really what it is. We're basing it all on our own experiences from our own countries and, and that's not what's happening here. It's different, you know, the different people with different ways of thinking and feeling and, you know, most of the time it's not what you think it is. And even if you convince yourself this one's different, probably not. Probably not. We hear that all the time. I thought she was different and then... I know what Japanese people are like, but, but I thought she was different. And then... get that all the time. Anyway, hopefully this helps someone in some way because, you know, they can at least keep it, you know, keep their eye out for this. Be careful. But people won't. We've been making videos like this and talking about this topic with people for years. And it doesn't make any difference. And people send us messages and we tell them, look, you know, what you think's happening is probably not what's happening. If she's not answering her emails, you know, it's over. Uh, move on, you know. But we know that most of the time they're not listening because, you know, that's what happens, isn't it, when you're in that sort of circumstance. It is hard to listen and hear the truth, isn't it? So, anyway, there it was. More videos coming soon.